Father God, just thank you uh, that it doesn't matter what uh, we even say, it doesn't matter what others say, it just matters what you say. Uh, so Father, we just thank you of who you say we are in Christ Jesus. You say we are yours and we are your children. So Father, let us just live our lives believing that and walking in that amazing truth. Uh, Father, just open our minds and our hearts as you just give us this word uh, that you have for us today. And just speak through me and allow me to get out of the way. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Now, for the past three weeks that I have uh, been up here, I've been talking about teams. Or more specifically, this team, Team HBC. And for those who have been here in person or have joined us in line, online, you have learned what type of team we are. You have learned what our mission is. You have learned how vital you are to the team. You have learned that you have a role on this team. You have learned about the consequences of failing to be a faithful uh, team member. You have been encouraged to become more active on your team. And you have been asked to decide whether you want to be on the team or not. As Joshua asked the Israelites, he said, for this day, you choose with God or without them, right? So with this team, with church or without it, you decide. Well, uh, for the next few weeks, starting on this Sunday, I want to encourage everyone and remind everyone on Team HBC that once we decide that we want to be a, a team member here, a teammate, we need to be a good team member. I mean, there's really no point on being on any team if you are not going to be a good teammate, right? Well, here at Team HBC, we should all want to be, and we should all be a, a good teammate. Now, let me see a show of hands. How many of you out here have played on some type of team sports sometime in your life? All right? So, overwhelming majority of you. So that means that most of you know the difference between a good teammate and a bad teammate, right? The difference is night and day. A good teammate is such a, a blessing to the team. And a, a bad teammate, right, is a hindrance and a headache to everyone, right? As Christians, for those people, we just say, God bless their soul, right? That, that's what we say, God bless them. Well, well, here at HBC, we all want to be a blessing to one another, Amen. Right? All right. I hope you don't want to be a curse to someone else. All right. We, we don't want to be a burden to this team. We don't want to be worthless as a teammate. We don't want to be a dead weight. We want to be a blessing. We want to be a teammate that shows up and does our part to make this team successful in accomplishing our mission. So, for the next few Sundays, I want to give you some attributes of what a good teammate is, basically. I want to share with you some attributes that we should all have as members of this team. Now, the attributes that I'm going to share with you, or most of them, are pretty universal. They pretty much apply to all kinds of teams and every type of team, whether it's a church team or a, a baseball team, all right? But for this sermon series, I'm going to kind of specifically talk about how they apply to Team Jesus. So if you are new, as so many of you are, if you are new here to HBC, or if you are a new believer who just joined Team Jesus, I'm going to tell you the type of teammate that you should grow into, the type of teammate you should be. To those veterans, to all of those who have been part of Team Jesus for a long time, and perhaps been a part of Team HBC for a long time, I want to remind you of who you should continue to be, all right? So here we go, we're going to get started. This is the B's to being a good member of Team HBC, the attributes of a good teammate. The first one is this, be active. All right, I was lazy, I didn't give them to the screen, the guys up there, so it ain't going to be on the screen, but you can write down. All right, the first one is be active. For those of you who, who watch sports, you know that the word active basically means being available to play. To all my fellow fantasy football players or owners, you know that the first step uh, to winning is having all of your starters active, right? 
All teams need their best players and all their players present and active to be able to compete. Inactive players are incapable of winning a game. Inactive players do not help their team accomplish their goal. Well, that same truth applies to the team here at HBC as well. All right, Active members help the team succeed in their mission. Inactive church members do not help our team accomplish our goal. Inactive members are incapable of helping the church succeed in its mission of making disciples and fulfilling the Great Commission. Now, when I got to HBC about six years ago and read the bylaws, I was not surprised to see it say the same thing as so many other churches had. I discovered that to be considered an active member of this church, your big requirements was this. You had to attend, listen to this great burden, all right? You had to attend church one time a year, all right? One time a year, I know, Whew. Slave drivers right there, all right? You know, Holland Baptist was not the minority. They were the majority. To be considered active in church, you just had to show up one time a year. That was pretty common in, in the Baptist world. And some of the churches had, you had to show up for worship once a quarter to be considered um, active, all right? Now, when we think of a team and we hear that, and then we see the reality of teams, there's a big disconnect, right? And church, I don't, I don't hope to hurt your feelings when I say this, but some churches have a lower standard for their membership than sports teams, hunt clubs, and civic groups. Seriously, if you don't pay your dues at your hunt club, you ain't get a chance to go sit on the stand and shoot the big buck, right? Right? If you don't pay for your book club dues to get the book, you can't join them in reading the book. Hunt clubs and book clubs demand more from their members than churches. But think about it. We are the body of Christ, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And we have been given the most important mission in the world. We have been entrusted by God himself to spread the message of Jesus Christ and to make disciples out of all those who believe in the gospel, yet we don't hold each other accountable to do this. Let me ask you something. How can the church as a whole accomplish its mission if every one of us it's all of its members only showed up once a year. How could we accomplish our mission if its members only showed up once a quarter? How could we accomplish this mission if we showed up once a month? The answer is, we can't. So many churches in this country are dead or stagnant because so many of them are filled with inactive members. Yeah, they may be active according to the bylaws, but they are inactive in the eyes of Jesus. They are inactive in the eyes of their pastor. And they are inactive of all the true active church members who are putting in the work. Now let me get personal with you all for a moment. How many members of Team HBC do you know who only show up about 25% of the services offered each month? Alright, we all know a lot of those. How many once-a-month teammates do you know? Now let me ask you something. We got so many new folks to this church, all right? Do you know those once-a-month teammates as well as you know the others in the church who are more visibly present and engaged in the life of this church? I mean, isn't it hard to grow with the teammates you see only once a month compared to the ones you see twice or three times a week? It's hard to bond, right? It's hard to grow as a family. It's hard to jail as a good, powerful team. You know, to those of you who are the once a month or once a quarter members, be honest with yourself. Aren't you having a hard time connecting with your church family? Even though you're part of the family, don't you kind of feel like you're, you don't get the inside jokes, you don't know what's going on? You're part of the team, but you're like, when did they learn that play? I'm not sure where my position is. And you even feel awkward in your own family, in your own church? Aren't you finding yourself spiritually stuck in the same spiritual stage that you have been in for last year and the year before and you have been in for the past decade? 
Do you notice that while the, the members, your teammates around you, are growing in their love for the Lord, growing in their love for one another, coming together as a tight-knit family and laughing and joking and serving one to another, you find yourself in the same spot you've been in for years, and it's kind of stale, and you know something's wrong, but you just don't know what it is. Now, be honest with yourself. How will you ever become the person God created you to be? And Jesus saved you to be. How will you ever accomplish the mission Jesus gave you if you are only truly available and active 25% of the time or less? Some of you are constantly in the shadows. You arrive late. You sit in the back. You leave early. You're typically present 25 or 50% of the time. Some of you have been here for years, but you have never signed up to serve. You have never joined a life group. You have never grown deeper in your faith. You have never get to know your church family. You have never served. You have never gotten out of the boat to walk on water. You have never challenged yourself. So let me ask you something. How can you accomplish the role that Jesus puts you on this team? If you're not active, if you're not here at the church. The first step to being a good teammate is to be present. That's the first thing that God looks for. Who's available? What did Isaiah say? Here I am, Lord, send me. Inactive people can't say that. Now listen, if you're a 25 percenter, a 50 percenter, listen, I am not mad at you. I'm not. Please don't think that. I'm not fussing at you. But I'm frustrated because I know that you're missing out on so many blessings. I see how so many of you are growing and surging. I see the light of Christ in your eyes and the happiness and joy. And I see you becoming the very image of Christ. And over here I see people that are in the same dag blame rut that they've been in. And they're not looking more like Christ. They're looking like the same person and they're struggling in life and they can't figure it out. And I won't be like, the first step is being active. You're missing out on becoming who God wants you to be. You're missing out on developing lifelong friendships with your brothers and sisters. You're missing out on the feelings of accomplishment when you see the fruits of your hard work pay off. You're missing out on having great relationships with Jesus and your brothers and sisters in Christ. So church, do you really want a relationship with God? Do you really want a relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ here at HBC? Well, then you need to be committed. You need to be active. Listen, it is impossible to build full-time relationships with part-time commitment. All right? It is impossible to build full-time relationships with part-time commitment. You need to know that if you are a Christian, Jesus demands 100% commitment from you. If you're in a relationship with Jesus, you need to know that He wants all of you. Not just 25% or 50% of you. You need to know that if you are a member of Team HBC, your teammates, we should expect 100% commitment from one another. Not 10% or 20% or 50%. Think about this. Would your supervisor at work be happy if you only showed up for work 25% of the time? Would your marriage be happy if you were only available to your spouse 50% of the time? Would your body work if your heart only pumped 75% of the time? Listen, here's the bar for you, okay? I'm going to set a bar for you. This is the minimum requirement I want you to challenge yourself for. I'm asking that you be as committed to this church at least as much as you are to your bowling team or your softball team or your scrapbooking team or your hunt club or your video game team or your exercise team or your neighborhood walking group. All right, be as active as part of the body of Christ at least 
with that and then start going up. I find it incredibly sad that some Christians are more committed and active in recreational teams than they are the very body of Christ that they were created to be a part of. I'm incredibly sad that over the years that the churches, instead of seeing this and challenging folks, they have just lowered their standards. They have lowered their expectations of its membership. When did it become that we expect so little from one another? This church, which has been entrusted with the most important mission in the world, an urgent life or death mission, a mission of eternal consequence, heaven and hell, is filled with inactive members who are not even faithful in attending team meetings, much less accomplishing the mission. And generally, church speaking, the church and its pastors just accept this as the way it is. In fact, most pastors are too scared to hold their congregation accountable. They're scared to challenge them and call them out on their absence. But I don't get it. Why are you scared to call out a people who's coming 0% of the time? They can't come less than 0%. Okay, I won't come in at all, Pastor, but now I'm not coming in, I'm pissed off. Okay, I won't see you here to be angry at me, that's fine. At least you're thinking of me some way. <laughs> you can't be scared of losing people that's already lost. We need to pray for them. If we encourage those inactive members... If we rebuke them, then maybe they will listen to the Holy Spirit and come back to church. Listen, I encourage each of you to reach out to those interactive members and to stir them up. It is good to stir the pot. You know what? If you don't stir, everything settles down. So it's good to invite them to church. It's good to tell them that you miss them. It's good to kind of rebuke them in love, so stir the pot. In fact, the writer of Hebrews tells us to do that in Hebrews 10, 14, and 24, uh, 24 through 25. Excuse me, listen. It says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. How do you do good works if you're not here? It goes, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Stir one another up, all right? I'm going to be honest, I, I kind of turned up the heat after about a six months or a year of, miss you, hope it's okay, I understand, we're all busy in life. If that's eventually not working, maybe you need to give them the, hey, you're not living up to who you saved, you're, you're, you're not living up to the standard God said. You're not being who you claim to be. I see no fruit in your life. All right? If you give them a, a, a whole year of niceness and sweetness and it doesn't change their heart, give them the truth. Tell them. Just, just tell them. Tell them in love, but tell them. Because I would rather they be mad at me and repent and come back and see me in heaven for eternity than think they're saved and be in hell. Stir one another up. Remind one another to do our job. Remind one another that we need to do good works. Remind one another that we need to be good teammates. Remind one another to be active. Let's remind one another not to neglect coming to church. Now listen, a lot of times pastors and churches would rather have bad teammates than no teammates. Look at them, the biggest churches out there with filled up with people are the ones that do not hold their membership accountable to anything. They're the ones that say, Jesus loves you where you are. Yeah, you can stay there, I'm not challenging you, you're not accountable, don't worry about your sins. Just put $20 in a plate and hear this awesome music and feel happy about yourself. Right? So a lot of times, especially in America, churches would rather have a, a, a room full of bad teammates than just a few disciples. But we need to be like Jesus. You see, Jesus has a higher standard. 
Jesus would rather you be off the team than remain on the team as a bad teammate. In Revelation chapter 3, we read where Jesus vomits out lukewarm, inactive, uncommitted Christians. It was on a team called Team Laodicea, which was a church in Asia. Listen to Jesus. He says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would wish you were hot or cold. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Church, if you're hot for Jesus, if you're on fire for Jesus, you will come to church. You will be active. The first step to being a good teammate, a good church member, a good and faithful disciple is simply to be here. You need to be present. You need to be active. It all starts right there. Showing up. Right? The second attribute of a good church member is this. You need to be coachable. Be coachable. If a player on any team is uncoachable or unteachable, they're absolutely worthless as a teammate. Worthless, right? Pastor Josh coached a lot of basketball. He won a state championship. He will tell you he'd rather take that okay player that would do anything and everything he asks and with all of his ability than take that pretty good player that won't listen worth a lick. Right? Now, and I know in the sports world, sometimes an athlete's physical talent is so great that they can still be a great player And have a successful career even though they're not coachable and a horrible teammate, right? Let's face it, LeBron James could be the worst person in uh, America. Don't listen. Each time the coach talk, go blah, 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 blah. And, you know, just don't listen. Don't mean to his teammates. Kick him in the shins every practice. But he's still going to have a great career. He's still going to be awesome. Okay, so sometimes on a physical team, that superstardom, athletic ability... You still have great, even though you're not coachable. That is never the case on Team Jesus. It is impossible to be a disciple, to be a healthy member on Team HBC, and not be coachable and teachable. In fact, listen to this. The word disciple, which we are, we're disciples, comes from the Greek word that means, get this, one who engages in learning through the instruction from another. So in other words, a disciple is someone who is coachable. A disciple is a learner. A disciple is a learner of Christ. Jesus is the teacher and they are the student. Jesus is the coach and they are the player. A disciple is someone who is coachable. So as disciples of Jesus, all members of Team HBC should desire to learn. We should all have a teachable and coachable spirit. Unfortunately, many people are unwilling to be taught anything. They're unwilling to listen. They're not coachable. And because of that, because they have ears that refuse to hear and hearts that refuse to believe, They remain perpetually on this very shallow spiritual level and they never progress in a greater knowledge of God. Listen, if you are uncoachable, unteachable, hard-headed, hard-hearted, and unwilling to learn, it is not only detrimental to your own spiritual progress, but it also hinders your church team. Because you should be doing something that you're not, and somebody else is going to have to do their job and your job too. A couple of weeks ago, I shared with you some verses from Hebrews that, that captures this uncoachable and unteachable spirit. Listen to these words from Hebrews 6. We have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. you got to be a good listener. You know, men, how many times do we not listen to our wives? 
and then we realize it's something important, so we ask them to repeat it, and then they repeat it, and yet somehow when we actually ask for them to repeat it, we still find ourselves drifting the thought and don't hear them the second time either. And then they start to really get mad with us and not want to say it a third time, but they know out of necessity they have to. Or is that just me? Okay, I, I, I'm talking about yesterday, uh, me and my wife. But anyway, so we need to be a good listener, right? And, and Sid, my wife has to tell me the elementary things again for the hundredth time. She's like, I told you this three days ago, two days ago, yesterday, and three times today. Right? If I was coachable, she wouldn't have to tell me. But instead, she has to take me through kindergarten every day again. Right? And that's how some church folks are. Right? I'm like, you should be teaching Sunday school. Why do I got to tell you Jesus died on the cross? Right? You've been coming for 45 years to church. Yes, Jesus died on the cross. We should now be on to deeper things. You should be telling other people about it. If you want to be a, a good team member... Then you need to be a good listener. You need to be a good learner. You need to be teachable and coachable so that you can grow to be like Jesus in every way. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 15. Now, I'm not having it on the screen. I didn't have it on the board either. I'm just kind of threw this together last second. All right? So this passage, Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, this passage shows us what happens when you have a team of coachable Christians who listens to the ones God called to coach them and then are transformed by what they learn. Listen to verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. What this verse is saying is that God called some men to be the assistant coaches of the team, to be the quarterbacks of the team, so to speak, all right? And I want you to notice the assistant coach and the quarterback's role on the team. Look at verse 12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So Pastor Josh's and my role as lead pastor on this team is to equip all of y'all to do your job. Our job is to equip all of you to do the work of the ministry. We are to edify or strengthen and build up this team. We are the assistant coaches and quarterbacks of the team who are supposed to prepare you to follow through with the game plan that our great head coach Jesus has given us. And what is this goal for this coaching and this teaching and this training that we give you? Well, verse 13 gives us the goal. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. If everyone on this team is a better listener than me, if everyone on this team is coachable, right? If you, we all listen to the Holy Spirit, if we all listen to God's Word, if, if we listen to Pastor Joshua, myself, uh, and, and we learn what we hear, and we respond to what we hear, and we apply what we hear, we will grow and mature in our faith. And as we grow together with this coachable spirit, we grow together, as the text says, in unity. And we grow in maturity for the purpose of what? Of being like Jesus. Reaching the fullness of Jesus. Being completely like Jesus. And listen now to verses 14 through 16. You will see what happens to a coachable team as it does this, as it listens, as it is teachable, as it comes together and starts to grow in Christ. Listen, that we should no longer be children 
tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the hid Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Did you see that? When we are coachable, we will grow and look more and more like Jesus. We will be a strong team, as Paul wrote, where every part does its share. Every member does its job. And when everyone is coachable, And when everyone is growing, and when everyone is doing their part, look at what happens. It says the church grows. The verse I just read says causes growth of the body. All right? If you want this church to grow how Jesus wants, and I'm not just saying entertain people and just get butts and seed. I'm talking about growing as true disciples of Jesus Christ and making disciples. The key to growing the church the biblical way is the congregation who is fully trained and equipped and coachable grow together and as they do their job, as y'all do your job, guess what? The church grows. That's the truth to church growth is to be coachable and do your part so you need to know that as part of team HBC we are disciples and we should be constantly learning and growing in grace and we are to continue to grow until we reach the completeness the fullness of Christ and we get there by being coachable As disciples, as students of Jesus who want to become more like Jesus, we need to understand that the only way to be like Jesus and to become like Jesus is to be coachable. So be coachable. All right? Next point, last one for the day. Need to be usable. Number three, be usable. So far, I told you you need to be active, right? Being active means you just need to come to church, you need to be here, you need to be present. Then I told you you need to be coachable. That means you just need to listen and learn. Well, after you listen and learn, guess what? You need to apply it. We need to apply it to our life. And that was what I mean when I says we need to be usable. After you have constantly showed up, and once you have become coached up, you need to be willing to be used up. All right? After you have constantly showed up, and you have become completely coached up, you need to be willing to be used up. Let me give you a scenario to think about. Picture a football player. Let's name him hmm, Christian. All right. Now Christian is starting his first year with the team. He has been chosen by the coach to be the team's running back. He has trained all season in the weight room. He has studied in the film room. He has learned all the plays and he knows the playbook by heart. He has been trained up and his body is in shape. When spring training arrived, he hit that field hard every day, doing every drill and practicing hard with his teammates. As preseason ends, Christian finds himself coached up and fully trained and equipped for the season to begin. Well, after all this work, The first game of the season finally comes around. It's finally time to hit the field. After that coin toss by the referee, Christian's team finds themselves with the ball first. So all the offensive players hit the field. But when they got out there, the coach realized they were missing a running back. Christian wasn't out there. The coach looked around wondering where his running back was, and he saw Christian sitting on the sideline on the bench. So the coach calls out, hey, Christian, it's game time, baby. Get on the field do your job. Christian calls back, sorry, coach. I'm just not feeling like playing today. After the game, an argument, Christian apologizes. He apologized to the coach. And then he shows up each and every day and has a great week of practice. 
He's there every day. He's always present. He's always active. He studies the playbook diligently. He enjoys running drills with his teammates. Well, game day rolls around. Everyone on offense hits the field except for Christian. The coach seeing Christian on the sideline once again says, man, what's your problem? Get in the game. He says, nah, not today, coach. The pattern keeps going on each and every week. Christian's always there. He's always present. He's active on the team. He practices. He genuinely seems to love his teammates. He knows the playbook. He seems to be coachable. He's agreeable with the coach. He listens and practice. He obeys. Yet each and every week, when it comes to actually play and do the mission and fulfill his purpose, he sits on the bench and refuses to play the game. So after several weeks of this, of Christian refusing to get in the game, the coach finally calls him into his office on a Monday and says, Christian, you know I love you. I handpicked you. I chose you to be on this team. And I've given you everything you need to exceed in the game of football. You have all the ingredients. But it's with sadness in my heart that I have to tell you that you're not a true part of this team. It's time for you to pack up, stop playing, and just go home. But before you leave, before you leave my presence and this team, I want you to know how disappointed I am. How could you say to me, coach, coach? Yet never do anything I commanded you to do. You see, Christian, I gave you everything. I I, I gave you everything. And all I asked in return was for you to give your everything. All I asked for was for you to just play and get in there. You were always there to listen, but you never obeyed. You never made yourself usable. So leave my office. Clear out your locker. The truth is, I never truly knew you. Church, if you were Christian, what would you have said to the coach here? What excuse would you have given? Folks, if you want to be a good teammate here at HBC, you need to be usable. You need to be usable. So let me ask all of those of you who are not being usable question. What will your excuse to Jesus be when you are called in his office at the end of your life for not being usable? For those of you who profess to be a Christian yet refuse to serve, for those of you who profess to be a Christian yet you refuse to participate in the work of the church, for those of you who profess to be a Christian yet refuse to use your gifts and talents God gave you, for those of you who profess to be a Christian yet refuse to do your part on the team, for those of you who profess to be a Christian yet you refuse to take part in fulfilling the Great Commission, how will you answer Jesus when he says to you what he says to others in Luke 6, 46, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things I say? And then you will hear him say, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I never, never, never knew you. Listen, a disciple of Jesus will be usable to Jesus. A disciple of Jesus will be usable at church. A good team member at Team HBC will be usable. So I love it when you show up and just sit there and worship. I love having people to preach to. It's just not the same with empty pews, right? So I I do love it when you come and sit, but just don't stay sitting forever. Do something with what you learn. Don't just listen to God's word and do nothing with it. If you want to be a faithful follower of Jesus, you need to be involved in the life of the church and strive to become a useful member. Look for opportunities to serve in ministry and look for opportunities to serve your fellow members. You need to get in the game. You need to get off the sidelines and get to work. We have so many wonderful uh, ministries here at HBC. 
There are so many ways we can serve, so make yourself usable. You were created by God, saved by Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a useful part of the body of Christ. You were created to be a good and useful teammate. As Ephesians 2.10 reminds us, it says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Church, God created you, saved you, and drafted you to Team HBC so that you could be used by Him in a mighty way. So let God use you. God has gifted you with so many talents and skills for you to use to advance his kingdom and succeed in the mission he gave you. So let me get real with you one more time today. Be honest with yourself. Are you here to be used by God? Or are you here because you think you can use him? Right? Do you come to church to make yourself usable to the church? Or do you come because the church seems usable to you right now and in your life? Are you here to do your part and advance the kingdom? Or are you here with the hope that the church will serve your interest in your kingdom? Church, do you want to be used by God to change your community? Do you want to be used by God to change this world? Then all you have to do is be usable. Now, church, as the band comes up here, I just want to wrap things up this morning by asking you a question. Do you truly want to be a good team member here in HBC? Do you truly want to make Jesus happy? Do you want him to say at the end of your life, well done, good and faithful servant? Well, you need to be active, you need to be coachable, and you need to be usable. Listen, I'm going to tell you some good news. This made me happy. Listen, you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be healthy. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be successful. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be good looking to be a good team member. You don't need none of those things. But you do have to have good attendance. You have to be a good listener. And you have to be a good worker. And isn't that something that we all can do? We can all show up. We can all listen. We can all do the best we can. I'm not saying you need to do the best of all time. You do the best with what you got. At the end of the day, a good teammate is someone who simply shows up, gets coached up, and then wants to be used up. That's it. Let me get that again. The whole thing is this. You want to be a good church member? It's someone who simply shows up, gets coached up, and then wants to be used up. I pray that all of us will be good teammates. And I will pray that God will continue to use us in a mighty way. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for all of those who are such wonderful teammates. All those who are active all those who are coachable, all those who are usable. Father, that is why this church is doing so many amazing things in this community. Because it has so many people who are showing up, being coached up, and want to be used up. So Father, I just thank you for all those people for being faithful. And Father, I just want to pray for all of those who are right now, perhaps they're not being as active as they should. Perhaps they're not being as coachable as they should. Perhaps they're not being as usable as they should. Father, I know messages like this sting them. It should convict them. It should create an emotional response. But Father, let them know that 
there's no pit they can go too far where they can't correct where they are. Father, let them know that all of us that are active and usable and coachable, we have all been in seasons of our lives where they have been. Father, I know from experience what it's like not to be active and not to be coachable, not to be usable. So, Father, I, I, I hope those people don't realize that we're coming from a place of condemnation, but a, a place of understanding. Because we've all been there. We know how they're feeling. And we just want to see our brothers and sisters who ain't quite got it right yet to just figure out and join us so they would true, have true happiness and joy in their life. So, Father, just continue to be with us. Continue to speak in the hearts of these people. In your son's name I pray. Amen.